First on BBC Two, Mark Lamar discovers there's no place like home when you've had enough. Once upon a time there was a little boy who lived in a lovely house with his mummy and daddy. They were devoted parents and worked hard all their lives to give him the best of everything. They sent him to a very good school and dressed him in beautiful clothes and every year he had the most wonderful, fabulous birthday party. He was their little prince. Then one day the little boy said to his mummy and daddy, I can't stand it anymore, I'm leaving, I'm taking my rubber sheet with me. Getting on your back all the time. About the phone, oh, what did you do last night? Always be back home before 10 o'clock. Turning lights on. How much you have to drink? Having your key when you go out. You definitely can't do that, you're supposed to be working. Clean up your room, clean the table. Mum and Dad always complain. No enter. I just had to move out for my sanity, you know. <laughs> Say bye, Mum, bye, Dad. Oh, get out, get out, get out with your lies. We want to go home with us, we want to play golf and break. Basically, they think you're lazy. You treat this place like a hotel. Your mother's not a servant, you know. They don't like your clothes, they don't like your hair, they don't like your friends, they don't like your shoes, they don't like your messy room. I'm sick and tired of clearing up after you. I'm not doing it. Do you hear me? You get tired of that room before you come down as well. And most of all, are you listening to me? They do not like your attitude. What the hell sort of time do you call this, eh? Your mother's worried sick. You got a but at the heart of the matter, your mum just doesn't like the fact that you're growing up and your dad doesn't like the fact that you can take him in a fist fight. My dad, Louis, just said, like, it's too much. I'm leaving. That's it. I'm packing my bags. Scrambling at some clothes, pick me bag up and see you later. I'm off. Ta-da. Bye. Oh, it was wonderful. I love my children dearly. But it's when the time comes for them to go, it's time for them to go. I can never go back. Ever, ever. Ever. So, with no hard feelings, you prepare to set off on your voyage of discovery. Now, it can be fun, but generally leaving home is going to be hell. Now, your mum will try and help by giving you some of those essentials for starting a new home, but all you really need is an ashtray, some warm clothing, some nutritional food, some toilet paper, and, of course, you're bound to get some parental advice. So, my mum took it hard. Again. When I left home, my mum cried. I jumped for joy, because at last I could get away from her stranglehold. Sorry, mum. They said, you'll be sorry. And rather irritatingly, I was. And it's at times like this you find out who your real friends are. Look, don't give me that. You must have a floor. Everyone's got a floor. Yeah, hi, it's Mark. I've left home. I'm looking for somewhere to stay for a couple of nights. I wonder if you could, uh... We used to keep on people's floors. Well, that's your attitude. Ask around whoever had somewhere to stay. You know, just for a night or two. Well, I lived with some friends and it was like moving from here to stay with one friend. We met at that bus stop once. Remember, and the bus was about five minutes late. Staying with another. Well, no one told me he was dead. How am I supposed to know? We always ended up sleeping on stations. But well, when, when are you moving? I used to hitchhike all the time. For God's sake, it's a hospital. There must be some spare beds. I don't know why I'm not in a morgue now, really. Brilliant. So it'll be warm and everything. You'll probably end up staying with an acquaintance and they'll find you some cosy corner to keep in. But believe me, the glamour of that soon wears off. What you really want to find is a place of your own. We had this room, it's like the size of a shoebox. It was about a two bay, it was about... It was about it, honestly, it was about that wine. Having windows I was living in a cupboard. It's horrible, damp. It was rotting. I lived with a load of punks in a squat and one of the punks had brain damage tattooed on his forehead, but the romance soon went. The third day after I moved into my apartment, I was sleeping and I had a giant cockroach on my male anatomy when I woke up. Ooh. The pipes had burst in the ceiling. It was just freezing. There was ice inside the windows. It was that cold. You could actually feel the heat racing out the flats. It was like you raced to get into the bed before it all out the windows. There was a wind that blew underneath the carpet in the sitting room, so as you were watching television, the carpet went like this. Moving into a squat. This way, Mr. Lammer. It's Lamar. Uh, yes. Uh, lighting, the bucket, heating, three irons, and no need for experiments. Can I have a look around? By all means. 
Lovely. Now, don't get too disheartened, first of all. You're bound to see a few dumps, but think of the potential. Can I put a few posters up in here? No posters. How can you live in such a horrible place? The carpets have been there since probably late 60s. Really ancient, old, rickety old furniture. Terrible state, to say the least. If your electricity's been cut off and you haven't eaten for three days, chances are you need to find someone to share those living expenses with. And if you thought living with your family was bad, prepare yourself, you're about to meet Satan. Now, when looking for a flatmate, obviously, what you want is a sex mania with a washing-up fixation, but you'll be lucky. He was a total old hippie and a very posh, very strange combination. My first ever flatmate was the worst nightmare I've ever had. I was a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> Kathy had done a runner and sold everything in the flat. I never liked her, though. Kind of a psycho. I used to live in the flat with this, this bloke who was just slightly mad. I think he'd been put away sort of the last time for shooting at a police car. He'd pull tricks on us, like we'd be coming home and he'd be at the top of the stairs with a handgun. Like that. So he, he wasn't really in the league of taking my toothpaste. When he moved out, he sort of like went and nicked everybody's possessions and took all the light bulbs out for some reason. She would become aggressive, like some Jekyll and Hyde. Be a killer, you never know. Could be sleeping. Yeah. She was quite psychologically disturbing. Smelly, ugly. Disgusting. He's just a real pig. She was a cow. But I always knew when she was in because there was like this aroma in the corridor which meant that she'd opened her door and some of her sort of smell had got out. Smoking's often a bone of contention amongst flatmates. I mean, there's nothing worse than sharing with some tight git who hides his fags. I do remember smoking in the bath when she was moaning about the ash that was falling in. Emma jumps in the bath with her shoes on at the end of an evening to take her makeup off and squeeze her spots. And... Loses dental floss lying all over the bathroom. Occasionally the odd ladies thing, plasters, and when people shave their legs, then it needs to get it down the plug on. If you are lucky enough to find a flatmate that washes their hair, all well and good, but make sure they clean out the plug up. I mean, look at this. No one else seems to wash their feet or ever. Wash their socks. Guys whose, whose feet stink, whose armpits give off awful fumes. Smelly socks and dirty pants and chapped all around a room. Let laundry pile up in the corner until it smelled. Underwear in the sink bothers me. She just doesn't care, she just throws her clothes everywhere. <laughs> Be immediately suspicious of anyone with an Australian accent and an engagement ring, and on no account tolerate their demands to keep the phone in their room. It's a shared house. No one should have complete control over the phone. Demand you keep the phone in your own room. What? Some lackadaisy attitude they did have. She never used to talk to you, ask her how her day had been, and she'd just go, mm. And I shared the first flat with this girl whose dad was a butcher, and he knew we didn't feed ourselves properly, so he used to send us these parcels of meat that used to bleed in the post. And they'd come out and they'd be always a bit lost in the post for three or four days. So they'd get these sort of green sausages and then we'd make them into curries and have diarrhea for a few days. I never cleaned the toilet in my life. Protect your food from others as you'd expect them to protect their food unto you. Food fights, food fights. I cooked uh, flour and water into a like, pie. <laughs> pie. I put some salt and pepper on top of it. I think maybe some tomato sauce. That was Christmas Day at dinner. It had this like grey sauce made up of um, oil and petrol. Pizzas, pasties and beans. Hopeless, hopefully. I had rickets. It's a shambles of a kitchen. Chopping his chicken going with this really sharp knife going And then he used to like sing in the shower all these like Christmas carolly type things. Now I've got nothing against musicians, they're lovely people, they're fun to have around, but you don't want to live with them. Oi! Don't you know any public enemy? I've got like six types of music going on all the time. I used to play Philip Glass, John Cage, The Smiths, The Cure, you know, Sex Pistols, and I used to be playing Jeff Lorber, Rufa Van Gogh, Stevie Wonder, Bob Marley. And we always, always used to cuss each other about our music. The landlord broke in and stole my stereo. Uh, when I went away for a weekend. The landlord decided to come in whilst I was in the bath, you know, let himself in. Mon Polish one used to cry all the time when people broke bits of his house. When I was moving my stuff out, he actually got one of his guys to reverse uh, a looting truck into my girlfriend's car. I was late by about a week with the rent, but I still had the deposit, so it was no big deal, you know. And I came back from the pub one night, and all my stuff was gone. And what he did, he got all my stuff and all the and contents of the bags, fridge and just put it into a plastic bag. So there's eggs on my clothes and all this kind of stuff. This is my place. I pay the rent. I do what I want, when I want, with who I want and where I want.
But on the other hand, my mum and dad are coming today for the first time, so I better make it tidy. They were fake bones, broken furniture, food spilt, not cleaned up. A lifetime squalor, really. Just the house was just a little bit. Uh... Your beer, son. No, thank you, Father. I don't drink anymore, but you feel free. I bought you a present, son. Oh, thank you, Mother. An ornament. It's lovely. No, it's a mug tree. You put your mugs on it. Eh? I don't have any mugs. It's an ornament. Oh, thank you, Mother. And relax. And that's how it's done. The first visit's vital. If you don't get everything perfect this time, they're going to come around every couple of weeks. The thing I had to do eventually was to actually um, change the locks on the dog because they kept on coming around. Tidying up while I wasn't there. <laughs> Major problem. Yeah, they never go up, do they? <coughs> Asks me about underpants and things, you know, that's what mothers do. Where do I get underpants from? <laughs> if nothing else, leaving home is a great learning experience. You can discover the diversity of foods available in a multicultural society such as ours. I mean, muster yourself up some Italian, some Chinese, some Indian. There are plenty of flavours available. My first curry out of that, one of them funny little packs. Oh, condom curry, was it? Oh. Yeah, it's looked a bit that way. It's one of those Vesta beef curries in a pack, you know, with raisins and foxy. I can cook an egg, <laughs> boil a kettle. I thought the coat was really big. Um, within three months, I was sniffling anorexic with just a big bin liner of soiled clothing because I couldn't work out how to use sort of uh, laundromats or anything. You'll learn how to use a washing machine, but it might not be the one in your own flat. And it's true what they say, you really do meet the most interesting people in a laundrette. Excuse me, sorry to bother you. Are they your drawers? She does the washing as well, so that's a bonus because I don't know really how, how to wash that well. You'll learn the best way to iron a shirt. I'm still a big little boy. And you'll be surprised just how satisfying it is eating food that you've paid for yourself. Bit of a mummy's boy, like now cooking. I do miss my mum's cooking, because mum's cooking is always, especially Sunday dinners, and you can like never make a Sunday dinner like mum does, basically. I'm so homesick, I can't tell you. I didn't miss them at all, it was very nice when they went, because I knew they'd come back and visit, which they do. Yeah, I'd love to go back to the stage the other night, you know what I mean? I went home after about six months, my mum was, oh, you're back again, are you? It suddenly dawned on me how much I've actually thrown away. Yeah, an hour late. Your mother's been slaving over the stove for two hours. Oh, that's all right, come in. It's not all right, no, is it? It's eh? ready, it's ready, it's all right. Freddie <laughs> Murphy's just got here. Oh, yeah, oh, that's oh. it. Walk off, yes. Go on. Get up, you big old fellow, what you've done. No, I've got tripod. Oh, I've got no I'm just a 